Hello, uh, my name's Brian Flint. Right, the Big Bang Theory and how they got it wrong. Um, I've got my own theory on this, which I would uh, like to explain. Um, okay, I would say the most significant thing that the Big Bang Theory is founded on is the red shift effect. That is when looking at the light from far distance galaxies there is a red shift. That is the wavelength of the light from the galaxies is shifting to the red side of the spectrum and the further away the galaxies are the more it shifts. Now, current theory puts this down to the, the Doppler effect. That is, the, the theory says that galaxies are moving away from us. Uh, in the extreme case, virtually at the speed of light. And this causes a Doppler effect, which means you get a red shift. I would say that the redshift is not due to galaxies moving away from us, but in fact is due to the photons of light um, losing energy as they travel through the vast distances of space. The far distant galaxies are emitting uh, light and the light can be uh, broken down into small, effectively, particles, which we call photons. Now the photons um, always travel at the speed of light, but they, each photon contains a certain amount of energy. Um, energy equals Planck's constant times the frequency of the um, photon and the frequency is in inversely proportional to the um, wavelength of the photon. Now when the photon loses energy, um, as I explained, due to uh, it going through vast distances, uh, interacting with particles of dust, hydrogen atoms, and the this results in the wavelength for the photon getting longer. I mean, if, it, if the photon, say, lost half its energy, it will, will result in the wavelength getting, becoming twice as long. Or if the photon lo loses 1% of its energy, the wavelength increases by 1%. As the wavelength increases, it's what we call red shift. The photons have got to travel for millions of years, thousands of millions of years. There's every reason that as they travel through space that there is some energy loss. Um, I can't imagine that space is lossless. In fact, space is full of, well, dust. Um, in fact, most likely it's hydrogen atoms. And as the photons travel past this dust, I believe there's an interaction. And as a result, a photon loses some energy. And probably the dust gathers energy uh, in the form of heat or, velo or velocity. Um, this uh, loss is extremely small. Um, to give you an example, uh, if the photons of light are travelling for 70 million years, um, they will lose about 1% of their energy. This results in the wavelength, the associated wavelength of the photon, increases by, by 1%, so you get a small redshift. 
but then if it photons travel for another 70 million years, they lose another 1% and so forth. Another supporting thing to, for the Big Bang Theory is the cosmic microwave background radiation. Uh, this is, um, I suppose, could be an echo from the Big Bang, which occurred 13.8 billion years ago. Well, I don't agree with that. I think it's a much simpler uh, explanation for it. And it's just simply um, radiation from the dust which uh, exists in the universe. Well, um, there, there is, as I said before, there is dust between the, throughout the universe, between the galaxies, and uh, uh, this this dust dust is a temperature of about plus two degrees above absolute zero and uh, there is um, what's called black body radiation uh, which would be in the microwave region um, wavelength of around two centimeters and this simply is what the uh, um, cosmic background radiation is well the big bang theory is based on an expanding universe and if you go back in time uh, everything must have been closer together and if you go back far enough well it you end up with a universe say this size and it expanded uh, about 13.8 million years ago uh, this expansion has carried on and that's where we are now. Everything is flying apart at, say, the speed of light. But as I just said, I don't go with this theory. Um, the the uh, redshift, which is the main reason for explaining this theory, is due to losses in photons of light travelling fast distances. So, in my theory, if the uh, galaxies are not flying apart, then they're probably roughly the same distance. I mean, there may be some sort of drift this way and that way, but the universe is not expanding. Therefore, the bang, Big Bang Theory doesn't exist. Uh, there's no reason so, to suppose that the universe is 13.8 billion years old. It must probably be much, much older. There's no reason to, to give a figure on this age. What this really means is that... Uh, we need to go back to the drawing board and reevaluate uh, the entire theory of astrophysics. Um, another fact which is supposed to support the Big Bang Theory is that well, most of the matter in the universe is hydrogen and then there's a followed by a bit of helium and when the beginning of the Big Bang occurred well for the first billion years or so uh, the matter in the big in the universe as it was was so hot that uh, the structures of uh, matter uh, was uh, some sort of high energy gas, you know, um, actual molecules or atoms couldn't form because it was too, um, too much energy there, too much heat. And then as the uh, universe uh, uh, expanded and started to cool down, the most elementary 
atoms formed and this would be hydrogen and therefore this is supposed to prove give proof to the Big Bang Theory but uh, I have an ex ex another explanation for this for why the universe is predominantly uh, hydrogen and that is there's another way in which uh, hydrogen atoms could have come from a very high energy gas and this exists inside a black hole um, what I'm really saying is that, uh, that matter is emitted from black holes and the energy is uh, so high at this point that the matter that, it, that it's emitted is, is, is uh, in fact hydrogen atoms and again a bit of helium. <coughs> well, how come matter is, is leaving a black hole with so much gravity? Well, my explanation for that is that black holes, or the larger ones, are spinning at a very high speed. When I say high speed, something in the order of about one revolution a second. The uh, matter that's inside the black hole, sort of a, a neutron density um, star you know, in effect, is spinning at an enormous speed and the centrifugal forces are enormous. In fact, it doesn't take too big a size of black hole for and, and at a certain velocity, certain speed of revolution, for the speeds to attain that of the speed of light. And I believe that uh, effectively there is an escape velocity attained and that the matter is being emitted from the edges of the black hole. But if you like, a bit like a Catherine wheel. I mean, the shape of the black hole must be a, probably the shape of a plate and off the edges the matter starts to escape. Of course at this instant that it's leaving the black hole um, the uh, neutrons particles will have space between them. The matter will become less dense is it just before it leaves and at that moment it converts into hydrogen atoms. This matter is shoot, shot out into space. Um, uh, it will become part of the galaxy which the black hole resides in and a lot of it will shoot out into, into galactic space and over billions of years will form the dust which I was talking about earlier which slows down the photons also forms the dust that produces the background radiation my background microwave radiation that is seen um, I do think that small black holes were, won't emit any matter they have the black hole has to have a certain uh, spin, a certain speed of spin, uh, be a certain size, and the black hole will be sucking in matter all the, all the time and increasing in size and for meeting other black holes and they're forming bigger black holes and, and a state is reached where uh, matter is emitted. 
There's also another mechanism in which matter is emitted from a black hole, which is seen at the moment, sort of a plasma where the intense magnetic field um, spews out uh, matter on an axis. That is when the um, st a star gets absorbed, it gets ripped apart and is spewed out. Again, this, the, the, the structure of the star could well be um, reduced to that of uh, pure hydrogen atoms because of the energy involved.